G'day guys, and today Sean and I are going to do the review which is between the Cats and the Bulldogs at Simmons Stadium on the Friday night. It was Geelong home by 25 points in the end, and what was a bit of a arm wrestle at times. Uh, we went to the game, mate, on the Friday night, and uh, a lot of feeling a lot of feeling in the game, and we were pretty excited about it. Uh, good result, had to win once again, I and mean, we did. Uh, how did you see the game? Absolutely, to the 100, it was a good game to be at. Always good to get along to the Cats game, have a win, and watch NY break the record. Bartel plays 300, and both well played pretty well, also. So, but the game itself, yeah, I think a few people may have had the thought process of all those injuries out. The dogs should be an absolute rollover, but uh, we'll push over. But I wasn't really of that way of thinking, which I said before the game to you guys. Um, you know, I thought Dalhouse and Stringer were big ends and Red Path I didn't think was that big a loss compared to our back line and um, yeah I, I felt that they'd certainly come to play and that's a very broad saying they certainly came and we switched on and really took it up to us in particular that first half but we certainly overpowered them played some fairly good footy I, I thought it was as dangerous as our forward line had looked it looked really dangerous and I think sometimes it's hard to go well Especially when you're at the game, it's hard to go, gee, how well are we actually playing? Like, when you watch games on TV of opposition clubs, you get a really good gauge of what's a good game, when sides are playing well, because you're just watching neutrally, and it's on TV, and, you know, commentators say a few things, but I think a, a good comparison has got to be watching the Freo game a few weeks back, <laughs> and then thinking to how much of a struggle that is, and then looking to where we are now, and... By no means are we playing unbelievable premiership favourite footy, but in two weeks, I think it's been, we've come a fair way. And I remember we were speaking, you know, got to win one of these two, Dogs v Crows, and we've won of those. And one of them fairly decent. I mean, so we've been in control for probably six of the eight quarters, you'd almost say. Um, yeah, I agree. We have been, you know, dominated really at any stage, and I know it's a convenient part, but I'm fairly comfortable with where we're at. I think after the game we had a good discussion, didn't we, Ty? So yeah. me and you playing the more positive-minded optimist uh, towards my dad and my sister, who you know, tend to you know, maybe be more negative-minded towards what they do sometimes. And, okay. Yeah, I think... Uh, I'm probably talking more broadly here. I think the game itself, we, we really did play well and dominated around the, around the contest. Um, well, not dominated, but we were certainly held our own. I thought we lost the ball. Far better as they did. As I said, with the forward line, it was dangerous. That's what our tools really took control over the ground. And, uh, but yeah, I think, generally speaking, it's not going to be go from what we saw against Freo, click the fingers, and all of a sudden we're top two. Mm. Um, I think it's going to be a gradual build and I'm, I'm starting to see that gradual build the last two weeks and now it's been good so we're in the mix we're playing some decent footy beats some decent sides so I'm happy with where it's at room for improvement no doubt <laughs> always you know that bottom six or eight is, is still susceptible but I think we're starting to see a bit more cohesion from a back line and midfield to forward and Coming along, you would say we're on fire, <laughs> but we're getting the wins and we're doing what we need to. And as we say all the time, we have the luxury of having a potentially premiership list. So if we can get it all together, then look out. So <laughs> that's my thoughts on the uh, old broader issue of things, mate. I always find myself going on to random tangents about where we are in life. Than the actual game, but what did you think about the game? Uh, it's nicely summed up, mate. Yeah, we uh, we got the win, and all you can do is keep winning at the moment. Um, and with the way it's going, mate, with uh, how other things have panned out, it almost seems like it's going to be a, a, a battle and a race for percentage. There are so many teams that can finish top two for that top two spot. It's going to be so damn hard to uh, squeeze a home final. And absolutely vital if you're into, say, club like a Sydney or a GWS. I reckon GWS are in the box seat, but you never quite know. Um, now, I'm going to the broad issue of things, but... 
to the game. It was, uh, yes, yeah, certainly no, by no means convincing, uh, dominant, or uh, absolutely fantastic, but we, we played pretty well. So, I mean, as you said, and as we were discussing a few weeks ago, it's like, okay, we need to win one of these two. We've won both of them. So, you, you, you know, you, you wind back the clock a few weeks ago and you think, okay, if we can get one of these, that's great. We fly fast forwarded a few weeks, mate, and we won both of them. So you couldn't have asked for anything more, and we've yeah. won reasonably well in the two games as well, as you as you've sort of alluded to, been in control for a lot of it. Um, yeah, on the specifics of things, yeah, we um, according to our stats here, we got more disposals, about thirty more free kicks were even, even though I thought the umpires uh, missed a few, but they always do, mate. Um, the clearances, uh, we got up by five, and the contested possessions were up by nearly 30, and that's quite a significant uh, jump on the dogs, considering they're seemingly the number one contested team in the competition. Out-tackled yeah. yeah, them as well, uh, which is also a real positive when you're winning plenty of the boys. So, so I think uh, generally uh, up to about half time, it was a real arm wrestle. But again, that third quarter, mate, as we did against Adelaide, we really... Obviously, a bit of an arm wrestle in that third quarter, but we were able to just wrestle momentum. There were times where the dogs were pressing, and they had a fair bit of time in forward half. And I think I said to you and Jeff, you know, we're, we're absorbing the pressure, and we're not down by much at the moment. But if we keep yeah. absorbing, we're only down by this low margin, and we can make a break for it once we get back on top and the momentum swings our way, which it did. And uh, we really kicked away. Uh, yeah, you felt pretty uh, comfortable for most of the second half. Uh, I was a little bit more concerned, but <laughs> uh, I, I was uh, I was happy with the way we were just able to kick kick those goals at crucial times when we needed to, and uh, yeah, just a lot of our players stepped up. Happy with how the back line functioned. Uh, the forward line did look pretty dangerous when it did go in there and exposed uh, the dogs' defence a little bit without a Morris. Sort of Fletcher Roberts and uh, I don't know if Joel Hamling was playing defence, but certainly uh, made him look. A, yeah, yeah, I thought so. Yeah, certainly made him look a bit small in uh, defence, and we were able to uh, finally take control in that area. I feel like every week we could do that, but um, <laughs> it's uh, come to fruition this time around. Yeah, for sure, mate. Uh, yeah, we, we we did really seem to have it on our terms for a bit. But, um, yeah, two good points to make. The contested balls, Goggies are fantastic in that area. Granted, no Wallace, no Libertori for most, Libertori for most of the match. Yeah. Uh, that, but we're really good in that area. And a good point you make with the momentum and things as well. I think uh, a lot of supporters often go to games just wanting to be on top for the whole game. And, you know, I think um, in modern footy, momentum shifts regularly. And against a good side, you just have to accept that there'll be, you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes where you feel like this game's going out of control, sort of thing. Absolutely. But it is about how you absorb it. And, you know, the old catch cry is, oh, but if we keep going like this, you know, they'll eventually put it on the board. Well, it's not always true. I mean, when you have two good sides, eventually the momentum's going to change. That's what inevitably always happens. So, yeah. Um, you, you kind of put it on a scoreboard when you have that shift in momentum because, you know, generally it's so close this year, you could argue that momentum is anywhere between 60 and 40, maybe 55, 45% these days because, you know, it's, it's a close comp. So. Yeah, definitely, mate. Just having a look, quick look at the stats here. Liam picking 26 touches. He had four kicks, 22 handballs. Yeah. yeah <laughs> how, how, how about that? <laughs> probably why I didn't realise he had 26. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. The, yeah, no, he certainly uh, got a bit of uh, chief handballs at the back. No, he, he works out for his. But, um, no, nah, broadly, yeah, really, yeah, real, relatively happy. Like, as we often say, we believe our best football is better than anyone else's best football. And look, if any team comes to pressure a team on a day and they can't handle it and they're switched on and the other team are a bit off, I mean, that can be the difference. And that, uh, especially in this competition this year, like it's so, so even. So it won't be, uh, yeah, you wouldn't think the Premiership would be decided too easily, but it's going to be an intriguing final series that's going to come up. Uh, yeah, absolutely. 
move on to the votes, mate. Uh, had a bit of a chat about the old game and global uh, goings on. Uh, how do we see it? Yeah. Good stuff, mate. I've gone Reece Stanley, the three votes, uh, 16 touches, got the uh, seven marks, uh, got a few hit outs there as well. Also, got a few tackles and five big snags, sausage rolls, whatever you want to call them. Uh, best game for the club, his career, whatever you want to call it. Uh, he, he bobbed up when we needed a goal. Uh, he was kicking exceptionally straight. He straightened up from last week where I think he kicked one goal too. And what I love about him, mate, he's... I think mean, he's a great second forward for Hawkins. I mean, I don't think he's a natural forward by any means, but he, I think he uh, out, yeah, sort of um, outmarked or outplayed Source last week about four times, where um, he got into position to um, work him out and uh, take a mark inside 50. I think he took uh, would have taken at least three, the, three out of those four marks. Uh, quite incredible, and was just is able to run into space and get on a lead. So. I think he could be really crucial come final top, finals time. Um, yeah, so outstanding game from him. The uh, two yeah. votes to Paddy Dangerfield, so you can swap Stanley and Dangerfield around if you like. Doesn't really matter. They both played outstanding games. Uh, Thirty-three touches for the Dangerfield, five marks, four tackles, and three goals. He just did what he does every week. Just stands up in the contest, gets a quick kick away when he needs to. Um, Kicks goals at crucial times, much like Stanley did, and uh, wrapped up plenty of the footy, so it uh, was very good once again. And yeah, I saw uh, I to I and Zach Smith as well, mate. Uh, I was looking at a few yeah. names here, and Mitch Duncan was pretty good early, I thought. He, yeah, he, I agree. He, yeah, he got plenty of the ball early on, but um, I'll just give the, the nod to Zach Smith. He got 15 touches, five marks, and I think four of them were intercept marks. That was really promising. Considering yeah. the guy isn't the best mark on the team, but he's improving, it seems. Uh, 31 hit outs, and he also got a few tackles next to his name. So, yeah, I guess all these guys around the contest doing a really good job, minus Stanley. <laughs> but, um, no, nah, I, I love the way he's just able to take take marks in defence. That, like, that's a bonus when your Ruckman can do that. And as you say, with the clearances, when your Ruckman can do that, that's, um, that's golden. So, yeah, I love the way he went about it. And... Uh, much, uh, very cherry ripe after a nice rest. Yeah, he was, he was very good. Moving on to your segment, mate, the old chopping block. Uh, how do we have a look at it this week? What's happening AFL and VFL-wise? Absolutely, mate, and I, I must put one hand up with Reece Stanley too. I probably thought he was a Ford, a Ruckman or nothing, honestly. I reckon we discussed this not long ago, and... He's going a long way to prove me wrong and I hope he continues to do so because I really didn't think he was a forward. But watching him Friday night, he was very, very good and a real hard matchup with his height and pace. So um, that'll be great if they keep going like that. But as far as the chopping block, um, I think probably Lincoln McCarthy is one guy who's front and centre with that. I think he's probably had a few chances now. You know, it's not as though we won't see him again this year, but he's just not quite doing it, so it's probably best to give someone like Darcy Lang a go. It'd probably be a no-brainer if Lang was in the best for the NFL, which he wasn't. Um, oh, boy. I'm not even sure if he kicked the goal, to be honest, but 
Um, I'm, I've only looked at the scorecard, so I haven't read a report or anything. Lane could have gotten injured, who knows? But um, I would still like to give Lane a bit of go. I would like to give Gregson a go, but of course we won't see him for the rest of the year. Um, Caddy played in the VFL. We're, we're starting to get a bit of midfield depth, that's for sure. Um, yeah, you yeah. mentioned that Benegol is probably a bit of a quieter one, but I hope they give him at least one more. But I guess when you got Caddy in the twos, yeah. Yeah, that was uh, that was my line of thinking on that one, yeah. Yeah, the, the heat's probably on him a bit. Um, but, you know, we, we seem to have got the tall situation working as well as it did. Uh, on Friday, and Kirsten played VFL and not in the best, didn't kick a goal, so you know, mm. he won't be coming into the team. That's good. Colin Smith was good again. Um, he just, yeah, he's such a good VFL player. <laughs> and I've been a rat for him for years and years, but I'm just not sure if he's going to get a go. So he's knocking the door down, but we'll just have to wait and see. Scott Salve was named in the best as well. Yeah, uh, I've heard good raps on him. Yeah, so you, you just never know. I mean, <laughs> Selwyn, just, uh, he doesn't get talked about much, and he'll be a little while away, at least a couple of weeks. But at least he's, he's always playing decent footy, and you know, he's a good, he's a finals type player. So, um, but yeah, Murdoch's not in the best. Um, yeah, so a few guys not doing a great deal. Um, but yeah, I think Henderson will probably, you would think, come back. I think probably College has near might be time for him to go back to the twos as well. Um, he doesn't give you much offensively, which does hurt us with our back line. And he's starting to make a couple of blues as well, which is disappointing. Mm, yeah. He's not the best kick. He's, he's a reasonable mover. Uh, I think he's an okay mark, and he'll get better with confidence, but he doesn't seem like he's a great user of the ball. So, um, you know... You can't have too many of those sort of guys. We've already got one again. You know, Mackie isn't the most reliable kick anymore. Uh, so, yeah, you probably don't want too many of those sort of guys. But, um, yeah, it's interesting. There's a few midfield types in the VFL. Uh, did you hear how bad Barty's injury was the other week? Did you hear how long that was, or was it anything? Did he get an injury the other week? Yeah, yeah. Um, a couple of weeks back, he hurt his ankle pretty bad. I don't think I've even heard uh, about it. Okay, well that's good then, <laughs> because I I haven't really been on the AFL site as much as I would once upon a time, having no internet yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, if no news is good news. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, I don't think it'd be too much in the conversation anyway, but um, I do know you're... Uh, yeah, just out of interest, so... Yeah. No, it's all right. Um, no, I don't know. I hope he gets back well. <laughs> yeah. Intriguing. Yeah, thing, you it. Yeah, I just thought I'd say, but take a look at it next week, mate. Yeah, we have uh, the Bombers, I think. I'll just check here. Yeah, we've got the Bombers on the Sunday, mate. Uh, oh, intriguing. Uh, 20 past three, Sunday. Do you have work that day? I'm guessing you would. That's it. Yep, and it's a home game. That'll be interesting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I guess I'll. Where is it? Uh, Eddie had. Fucking fuck. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what? You swear on the review. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you like Eddie had, mate? Um, do you like our Eddie had, mate? Oh, the seats are just. Fantastic. Yeah, I suppose they are. Yeah. Oh, we'll get into the review. Oh, well, the uh, preview of this one. Yep. Yeah, so we got the <laughs> got the bombers um, who got touched up by the crows by around the uh, 80, 90 point mark, which is why it's going to happen. Um, yeah, we're looking in pretty good shape at the moment. I feel we're, we're doing what we need to do. Uh, last time we played, I think we won by five or six goals. It was a pretty dismal performance, but we got there in the end. We kicked nine goals for the game and. The Bombers came to play and we showed them absolutely no respect at all and played like millionaires and men's will kick five behind last time and <laughs> we, yeah. we yeah we couldn't kick kick anything so uh, let's hope this time around under the roof of Eddie had uh, we can get the job done uh, yeah look looking at it from a spectator and fan supporter point of view you'd probably say the Cats 
Uh, yeah, 60 to 70 points thereabouts. I'm not going to do any tips or anything uh, in regards to this game because uh, I don't want to moss myself with my uh, current thing. But going in, yeah, me not tipping, you'd expect the Cats around 60, 70 points. But, yeah, I'd go with that. What do you reckon, mate? Yeah, you'd expect that sort of margin. I'd, I'd expect that. I'd hope for even more. I'd be hoping 75 plus. I'll probably be disappointed if it's not more than 70, 75, to be honest. I think it's a great opportunity to really get a massive win. And, you know, as you said earlier in the review, never before has percentage really been so important because it's so damn close and it's so valuable in the whole scheme of where you play a final and where you finish on the ladder. So these are the sort of games that we really need to rock up with a real, you know, hook to the throat sort of mindset and just start well, finish well, have a real big win. So uh, interesting too that Adelaide were actually up by 98 points with about five minutes to go and the Dons kicked the last three, which... Um, actually dropped Adelaide's percentage behind ours. So wow. the, the Dons just kicking the last three randomly puts us into fourth, I think. I think we're fourth. So. Okay. Yeah, and Adelaide, Adelaide fifth. You know what, mate? I hope we finish fourth. Yeah, 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 no, it's probably not a, probably a guaranteed way to stay in Victoria. Uh, yeah, because yeah. we've got the Giants and the Swannies and the Crows that are probably the main other sides that could finish second or should finish second? Well, yeah, I mean, you you want to finish... You probably don't want to finish third. That's probably the take-home message, isn't it, really? Yeah, <laughs> finish second or fourth and you're right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that can be out of your control too, based on when you play in round 23, who wins, who loses. <laughs> that percentage, it's going to... It really is going to go down to the last second of round 23 to decide it. Hundred percent. So, yeah, any third thoughts on that one, mate? No, no, mate. You've said enough. You've summed it up beautifully, mate. I, I can't say anymore. <laughs> uh, very humbling to hear that, mate. Uh, no, nicely done by you tonight. Uh, thanks for listening in, guys. That's the review from Shorty and myself. Uh, so it was a cat's home at home by twenty five points. Uh, very handy win, and hopefully the cats keep on winning. Uh, we've got the Bombers coming up next week, so hopefully, fingers crossed, we can show up and uh, put in a really good performance there because uh, every point counts in this very tight competition. <laughs> and I can't say yeah, competition yeah. properly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, it certainly does, mate. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, don't forget to give the video a bit of a like and share it around and subscribe as well for more content. That'd be fantastic. And, uh, yeah, don't forget to check out Dario Joe. does the Geelong Gold video highlights each week. Uh, his link will be in the description below. Thanks for tuning in again, once again, guys. Uh, thanks for hanging around, and we'll talk to you all next time.